Good morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. Okay, you can't hear this, but he is definitely snoring right now. In today's video, I am going to give you guys three tips for knowing how and when to chuck a reed. Um, there are the normal things, you know, where the reed splits or you chip it or whatever, um, but there are three other ways, you know, if you have a reed that's been in your rotation for weeks and months, like, mm, when is it time to say goodbye? So these are three things that I look for that's kind of, I think, kind of unusual. Um, but before we do that, I want to thank everyone for your kind words about Camille. It really meant a lot to me and for the cards and, and everything and, and flowers that that um, friends and viewers and everything shared. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And you know, Camille had a really good life and, and she was a happy kitty all the way up until the end. And so I really appreciate all of, all of the love and support you guys have uh, sent me over, you know, over the past couple of weeks. Now, I know all of you are wondering, Luke, are you going to step up to the plate? Well, clearly he has, and he's doing the one thing he knows how to do better than anything else. One of two things. Sleep. Exactly, I'm talking about you. Oh, you're so cute. Sniff my finger. See, look how good he is. He does exactly what I tell him. Yeah, hopefully Luke will be able to make an appearance every so often in these videos. He's not quite as nosy as Camille. Um, Camille kind of would uh, demand my attention, but you know, uh, he's he's a good little guy and, and really, really sweet and cuddly, and he's been really wonderful the past couple of weeks. All right, so reads, oh my gosh. Okay, so how, how do I know? How do I know when a read is going to die. I mean, I'm, I'm like the queen of like chipping my reed on my teeth because I, I've got this big overbite, you know, and so I'm, I'm, I'll just like go to play and I'll be like, and like break my reed. So, you know, obviously <laughs> I'm not going to play on a reed that's like super chipped or, or anything like that. Um, or a reed. I've had reeds split down the middle before. That hasn't happened in years, but um, you know, I think it's just lack of care for reads. So, you know, those are some common ways that we just know it's time to say goodbye. But lately, I mean, I would say in the past few years, I've gotten a lot better at caring for my reads. And, you know, I, I'm pretty good at knowing how to save a warped read. I've been doing the whole humidifier thing and, um... And, and so I've, I've kind of learned how to make my reeds last for a long time, but because of that, my reeds kind of get to a point where, you know, they're not as, as great as they once were. I, I have maybe like 25 to like 35 reeds in my rotation and they're all at varying ages, right? So like some of them are like, you know, only a few days old and I'm just kind of breaking them in and I rotate my reads. I know there's this big movement right, right now to like rotate your reads, do a different one every day. I rotate my reads every like 30 minutes of playing. Um, mainly that's just, that's just for me because I want to be able to have the flexibility of air and embouchure to play on basically any read at any time and not rely on the one good read. Um, so I try to keep things uh, keep things fresh and not play on reads for too long once they're like waterlogged or, or being used, you know? So um, so I have, I have a lot of reads that I rotate throughout the week and I may, you know, for two or three hours of practicing, I may go through like two or three reads per hour, um, just rotating them and playing on them. And so anyway, so because of that, um, my reads get a lot of play time regularly, but also a lot of rest time regularly. So now they last me, like I'll have a read. This one's from June, June 12th. This was before I even tried doing that read vlog. This is from June. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, shoot. Oh man. 
Okay, I definitely didn't kill this one yet. Okay, that's good. Anyway, this guy's been my favorite for a long time. I um, played the Day Myra Hess concert on that read um, at the end of September. Um, and a couple weeks later, I went downstate and played a whole bunch for my family outside. I'm actually gonna test that guy out today. So the first thing that I look for in a read is when determining like, okay, it's it's over two months old. I need to keep an eye out on this guy. See how, see how he responds um, after you know playing on it regularly. Um, I will look for one one big thing, and that is dynamics. If I can only play in a very small dynamic range with a good sound, chances are that reed is probably dead. So, you know, if you're if you're trying to get the softest soft and it's just kind of like right and you're trying to play the loudest loud and you get this weird honk sound so the one dynamic wonder is basically what I call this read so you want to you want to try to avoid playing on these one dynamic wonders because it's going to inhibit your your musicality and your expressive ability so um, you know after a read gets past a certain point I'd say chuck it if it can't play at different dynamic levels so that kind of brings me to the next point, which is flexibility. So I think this is this is pretty related to the dynamic contrast thing. So so you do the flexibility test. So what I do is I I um you know I, I'll mess around with my jaw position to kind of see you know how far can I you know drop my jaw without the reed getting that weird buzzy honking sound and I think I think you guys know so what I'm talking about because it, it happens sometimes so sometimes it can happen when your reed is just dry so if you do the honk test and and it you know does the the honky thing but you're only like just starting to play on it soak it in reed for or <laughs> soak it in water for a couple minutes and then see if it still does it um, I, in my experience, it's it's time to, you know, trash a read if it, even after soaking it for five minutes, you play on it, and after a couple minutes of playing on it, it just dries out again, and it lo loses all of its flexibility when it's like totally dry. So that's that's my experience there. So I haven't played a single note today, and we'll see how this goes. <sighs> So I'm just kind of going yeah with my jaw, and it sounds a little bit hideous, but you want a reed that is flexible. Um, so you know, if you want to change your color, the color of your sound, or you know, do any sort of rhapsody and blue kind of thing, you you know, you want a reed that's going to be able to handle that air pressure and um, any sort of stuff you do. That's one of the joys of clarinet is having control over over every sound that comes out of your instrument and there's such a variety of sound we can get from the clarinet right so all right so at this point this guy is doing okay <laughs> So this guy's doing all right still, past the dynamic test, past the flexibility honk test. And so the third thing is, it's also very much related to to the other, uh, the other two is core. You know, if you're like, okay, this guy has, you know, good dynamics, it's nice and flexible, but the sound is maybe a little bit airy. There's very little depth. You get a whole lot of the, the I guess a whole lot of the higher overtones, but not a whole lot of the lower overtones. And so the reed can kind of sound bright after a while, right? So the brightness to me reminds me a lot of the sound of a kazoo. So we, you know, we all know the, the little toy, or I guess, I don't know, some people take it very seriously, but the little toy, e -e 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 -e, right? Um, so if we kind of start to sound a little buzzy, there's not a lot of lower overtones or depth in the sound then the reed is probably probably dead so this guy i mean he's probably on his last leg <sighs> Yeah, 
so that's all that's all I have I hope you guys find this useful and helpful now I know that everybody kind of has their own ideas of you know when to get rid of reads and some people would be like one month that's it in the trash that's fine. Anyway, if you guys have anything you would like to contribute now, please, I encourage you guys to like leave them in the comments below. Um, I really love hearing from you guys. I like your questions. I like when you guys share your methods as well. It's a way for all of us to learn from each other. And when it comes to reads, I don't really think that there's any one way of doing things. There's not really like you know, the there's not a like read Bible out there that's like this is the only way that you can work on reads and break in reads and know when they're they're dead or know when they're good or bad, right? So make sure that um, you guys experiment with a bunch of different people's methods and try to figure out what works really well for you because, um, you know, we're all different. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend, a great rest of your week, and as always, happy practicing.